Hi VC. Yes, it's me. Um, quick video. Well, maybe not so quick. I don't know. It depends how much I witter on for with inane insights into interesting and sometimes not so interesting records that probably no one cares about anyway. But um, got some vinyls to show you. But but. I've got CDs! No, not CDs! There seems to be a phobia in the VC about CDs, and I'm going to show some. So, um, I will leave them to the end, so that all those people who go on VC videos and then moan that there's some CDs shown in the video, then you can cut away. You can turn it off, you can do what you like, and not watch the CDs, that's fine. But if you, I've got a few interesting CDs I've picked up today, that I wanted to share, and um, there we go. Right, vinyl. Now I'm going to start off with a load of seven inches that I've picked up recently. Um, it's been over the last that one. What is that one? Ah, yeah, I will show that one. Right, these are seven inches I picked up. I think there were some, some from eBay, some from charity shops. They're all over the place. Um, what have I got? Oh yeah, they've got that one as well. Right, start off with that one. I've been getting a few jam singles lately. And I've been really enjoying just playing a few seven jam seven inches. Here we've got another one of their number ones, Town Called Malice, backed with the wonderful Precious, which is just such a great, um, it's pretty funky for the jam actually. Sort of looking ahead to their, to Well of Star Council in a way. Um, but Tan Called Malice, what a brilliant track, absolutely fantastic song. Um, one of the best number ones of the 80s, easily, by a country mile. Um, does it rival Going Underground? Probably just about, but absolutely magnificent. Absolutely fantastic. Right. Cracking, even. Um, I'll leave that. All of the, Now, the next batch of them came... Is it on that one as well? That. We can't even read it. Oh yeah, this was a batch of seven inches that I I saw. Um, somebody was flogging. I think I got them for a quid actually. It was a quid, and I thought, right, I am going for this because I I spotted something in this batch that I'll get to it anyway. Right. So first off, we had a couple of OMD singles. This is in really nice shape. Um, this is uh, Made of All Leans by OMD. I like a bit of OMD. Um, and, oh, I'm really into their latest track that they released. Well, there's a track I really like off their new album. It's on Spotify. Um, Isotype. Really good. It sort of goes back to their earlier stuff. It's, I'm really impressed. I've got to check out the album. But this is Made of All Leans. We all know this. Uh, the B-side is... Hang on, glasses time. What is it? Ha! They've cut the middle out and I can't remember. And I don't remember where it is written. Made of Orleans, 1981. Is it B-side 1981? I don't know. Anyway, so there we go. No idea what the B-side is. Um, I'm not sure if I played it. I've played the B-A-side and it's great. There's Made of Orleans. And to go with that, we got Joan of Arc. In quite a nice copy as well. Um, what's the B side of that? That's not written there. Again, the middle's pressed out. Jukebox copy. So, there we go. Made of all leans by OMT. <laughs> um, now, I also picked up... Now, this isn't in great shape. The record's a bit scratchy. Um, there's some... Well, not scratchy. It's surface noise. We've got... Um, 20th Century Boy with an original sleeve, which I'm quite happy about, by T-Rex. Uh, the B-side is Free Angel, which I think I've played. I can't remember, to be honest. Um, but I'm really happy I've got an original. And this is all part of a 99p batch of records, plus the postage, but basically 99p batch of records. So there's that, which is always well happy to pick up. Um, there was a bonus 7-inch, and I've got a, I haven't got a spare sing co cover at the moment. I can't find a spare 7-inch cover. I must have some, one, one somewhere. But um, there was also, in the T-Rex single, which is probably why part of it's a bit scuffed, 
was a copy of Donna by 10cc, which was a nice surprise. So there we go, Donna, and on the B side is Hot Sun Rock. There we go, on the UK label. So that was quite nice picking that up for uh, an extra. Um, also in there was, in this batch, I should have put the light on. I've made it, I've, I'm actually doing this with just daylight and it's, uh, I can't see anything. Oh, this is the reason why I bought the, bought it in the first place. And this is just, I was chuffed. I had to buy it for 99p. I had to get this. This is, let's get the right side. That's that one. Oh, for God's sake. Why does my why does eyesight go when you get older? Right. Jilted John by Jilted John on EMI International. I'm not sure if it's an original pressing or not, I don't care. I've always wanted a copy of this. One of the greatest punk come new wave songs ever. Absolutely magnificent. I'm so happy I got a got a um copy of it. This is the one this is the real reason I got this. I thought it was absolutely amazing. And it's a good really nice copy. Um, Jilty John, Gordon is a moron, Ray. I also picked up um, in here was the History of Rock 7 inch, uh, Buddy Holly, so we've got, and this is dirty, I haven't even cleaned this one, this is filthy, you can tell I can't um, play this one, but then it's Buddy Holly with True Love Ways on that side, and... That'll be the day on that side. Little bonus. Didn't really care if I got that or not. Quite nice. And then I only realised what this was after I got it. Now I saw this in the package. And I was kind of wondering what it was. Now this is a single by Eddie Stanton. A guy called Eddie Stanton. Now he was kind of one of these sort of guys on the fringes of New Wave, I think they got, you know, on, what label was it on? Black Eye Recordings, or Black Eye Records, so independent label, I think this got got into the indie top, indie chart in about, 19, when was it released? 1980, 1979? Somewhere around there. Um, absolutely beautiful condition, it's a really quite good sort of new wave record um called milton Keynes, we love you just just hysterical we've got the cows in reference to the is that a concrete cow i think that's one of the concrete cows i think from milton Keynes, which were famous at the time um and the b-side color in braille nice pc song title there I haven't played it, so I don't know if it mocks the blind, but I'm sure it's not particularly, um, I don't know. I'm making this assumptions there. But what I couldn't believe was, I mean, I've got no intention of selling this, but I, I just had a look on Discogs um, at the time, and there are only two copies on sale for there. And one was one which was in good condition, and that was 10 quid, but there was a, a copy in very good condition going for 30 quid. And I've just picked up a copy, well... 10p I suppose well 15p and I've got no intention of selling it I'm not selling it don't sell any of my records I collect um, so there we go Milton Keynes We Love You by Eddie Stanton right so that's a few 7 inches that I got now today which is a reason why I'm making this album I picked up a few albums as well and some shh, CDs and um you can see why I wasn't that bothered by having that 7-inch now, because today for 50p, I picked this up. Um, I've got to clean it. Hopefully it will clean up well. It doesn't look too bad condition. Um, but this is Buddy Holly Lives. Buddy Holly and the Crickets, 20 Golden Greats. Um, amazingly enough, I didn't have any Buddy on vinyl. I've got stuff on CD. I think I've even got something on tape. But I didn't have anything on vinyl, so I'm well happy to pick this up. I mean... Any, to be honest, any collection without a bit of Buddy Holly in it. I mean, there's gaps in the collection if you don't have any. Because he is possibly the originator of modern, of, well, one of the forerunners of modern pop. Um, definitely in 
going to influence McCartney. Um, and these songs are just timeless songs, like That'll Be The Day, Peggy Sue, Words Of Love, Every Day, Not Fade Away, Oh Boy, Maybe Baby, Listen To Me, Heartbeat. I mean, it's, it doesn't matter anymore. Well, all right, rave on. Raining in my heart. These songs are legendary. And if you don't know these songs, then get some. Bo Diddley, Brown Eyed Handsome Man, Wishing, Peggy Sue Got Married, True Love Ways. I mean, look, they're amazing. Um, so I'm well chuffed to get this. Well chuffed. And I think this was uh, James Griffiths showed, did a video where he was saying, you know, artists that didn't get the attention on the VCs, maybe they should have, or didn't get shown. Um, and Roy Orbison was one. I can't remember who the others were now. But I know Buddy was one. And he really should do. He really needs to get more attention because without Buddy Holly, pop music would not be the same as it as we know it. That is a definite fact. There we go, Buddy Holly. Uh, picked up another 12 um, compilation as well for 50p. Couldn't believe it, something else 50p. Most of them were trite, but could have had a, about six six dozen Shadows albums. That would have pleased James. Um, but I wasn't going for it. Um, Jackie Wilson, Jackie Wilson comp compilation. Yeah, it's got the it's got the main. Has it got all of them? It's got Sweetest Feeling. It's got Reap Tea, but it doesn't have the other one that I know, which I've completely forgotten the name of. Oh yes, it does. Higher and higher. So it's got all three of the song. I think I've got all those on seven inches from the eighty three issues. Um, but I don't know much Jackie Wilson, so I'm very very happy that I've got. A compilation so I can sort of investigate him further and possibly take it further um, but for 50p you've got to pick that up and I'm really looking forward to listening to that uh, what label is it on? BR Music no idea under license from CBS Special Products so at least I know they're the original versions they're licensed by CBS well I presume they are um, there's, a, there, there's a track listing if you want to investigate further. Right, Jackie Wilson. Um, today I also picked up one more album. Um, bit covers a bit battered, but the record looks in good shape. It's Joan Armour Trading's debut album, um, Joan Armour Trading. Now this was a quid um, and I'm it's got her best song. I mean it's got love and affection on it. Which I think is just a phenomenal song. I've loved that song for years and years. And I think I've mentioned it before, but hearing that song takes me right back to 1987 biology field trip. Um, Travelling in a minibus back from Norfolk to London, having looked at the effects of, I don't know, measuring seaweed dispersal along a beach. Something incredibly fascinating. Um, but I just remember there was quite a few of us and we all seemed to know all the words to it and we were just singing along to it and it was just brilliant on a battered old tape deck just brilliant just one of my best memories just a brilliant musical memory that was um so i'm looking forward to hear it actually finally hearing the rest of the album um if it's as good as love and affection then we're on to a winner covers filthy Ooh. so i think a clean all-around cover and record for that one there we go Right, if you're not interested in the CDs, now's the time to turn off. I don't want any comments down below saying, uh, CD, CD. Uh. So, here we go, CDs. I've played some of them. I haven't played all of them. One I already know. Let's do the one I already know. Right, the first one. I, these were all from one shop in... Oh, the record, the, the albums, I, today I was working in Newton Abbott, which is a town south of Exeter, about 25 minutes out from Exeter, um, down the A380 towards Torquay, and I popped in, I was working in Newton Abbott this morning, and on the way back I stopped off in town and um, hit a couple of charity shops, and there's a record shop in there called uh, Phoenix Sounds, Phoenix? I think it's Phoenix, um, and they, they often have like... Um, CDs where you buy, you know, they're a pound each or you get six for a fiver. I've got six for a fiver. First one, 
really happy I've got this. This is um, Mad Capsule Mar Markets, Japanese band. They're kind of industrial, kind of very heavy industrial, um, kind of Nine Inch, nine inch Nails-esque, but with a Japanese slant on it. And I know this one. This is uh, 010. So I know this album. Heard it quite a lot before. I think I've got it on a mini disc somewhere that I recorded when I was over there. Um, but I'm happy that I've got my second Mad Capsule Markets album. Brilliant band. Check them out. They're really good. Um, that one, I don't know. These two, right. These three I haven't heard yet. But one of these I'm absolutely stoked I finally filled a gap in my collection even though it's not vinyl and I will still look for vinyl I finally got some John Cooper Clark how have I lasted this long without any John Cooper Clark I mean I've had a book of his poetry for nigh on 30 years and I've read it oh you know every so often I read it but I finally got a CD of his performances and this is the very best of word of mouth and it's got all the classics I married a monster from outer space Beasley Street's on it. Um, what else is on it? Uh, evidently Chicken Town, Conditional Discharge. Just loads and loads of classics. Kung Fu International, that's brilliant. I love Kung Fu International. Um, he's he's a, something approaching. It looks like he's actually becoming some sort of national treasure. I think people have finally woken up to the, to the brilliant man he actually is. Um... His poetry is fantastic, and when he performs it, I've seen him perform it on TV and live, and it is just fantastic. Um, such a dry sense of humour. He's such a wit as well, and I just think he's just a really intelligent guy. And it seems that the media, the British media, has finally woken up to the fact that he, you know, he needs to be on TV more because he's been appearing on TV all, all over the place recently. Um, doing all kinds of things. And what's great is he encourages other people to write poetry. This is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. John Cooper Clark, I salute you, sir. Right. Um, okay, this one. There we go. This is... Now, I, can, I can't remember the site list. This is Modest Mouse, who I really like. Um, good news for people who love bad news. Haven't played it yet, so I can't tell you if it's any good. I think I have heard, might have heard this along the way somewhere. Um, but I like a bit of Modest Mouse. Sort of that that kind of American... Is it Americana? Not quite. Not quite, but it's that kind of American indie sort of sound. Really like it. I'm really looking forward to hearing that. That'll go on in the car. Um, I think Float On. Was Float On on here? I did look earlier on. Oh, shall I look again? Not that I can see because the light's not good enough. Float on. I'm sure that was a single off there. Not sure. Um, but there's a bit of Modest Mouse. Glad I picked this up. I mean, what? You know, I got these record, these CDs for five quid. It's unbelievable. Bit of Yellow Magic Orchestra. Um, first Yellow Mag Magic Orchestra thing I've got. Um, Ry Ryuchi Sakamoto, which is... Which guy is it? That's not Sakamoto. I think that's Sakamoto there. I think that's him. Can't see because the light's so poor in here. Um, of various brilliant pieces of music fame. Um, Forbidden Colours with Sylvian and doing all kinds of stuff. Um, but this was the band that he was in before all that. I haven't listened to this yet. But I'm really looking forward to hearing a bit of, a bit of YMO. There we go. Um, this I played this afternoon and I was gobsmacked by it. Right, this is Fuzz Townsend and this is, uh, Far In. This is such a summary album. This is brilliant. Right, Fuzz Townsend. So now he's most famous in Britain for presenting a classic car restoration show called Car SOS where he does up absolute wrecks of cars to absolutely pristine I, I actually quite like watching it it's just amazing seeing these old wrecks being restored to to absolute 
showroom beauties. Um, but before that, he was a musician. And he, for about four or five years, he was the drummer in Pop Will Eat Itself. So, obviously, with the Poppies connection, I usually tend to pick up extra stuff. Like, So, he was a drummer for the Poppies. He was also the drummer for Bentley Rhythm Ace. He... who else did he play with? There was somebody else he played with. I can't remember who it was now. I read earlier on. can't remember. But then he... he around the turn of the millennium, he... Um, put out a few records under his own name. Didn't really get very far. I think he had a single that got to number 51 in the UK charts, uh, which isn't on here. But this is really good sort of left field dance, alternative dance music. Um, and I was playing it earlier on when the sun, when it was really, the sun was streaming in. And it is such a feel good summer album. It is brilliant. Absolutely love playing this. Just fantastic. Um, some of the tracks that I read... I mean, there's a real... Mish, not a mishmash of styles. He uses different styles. So there's bits of jazz in here. There's bits of... Is it ragga or reggae? I don't think it's reggae. It's, too, it's not laid back enough to be reggae. Maybe ragga a bit. Um, there's funk. There's bits of soul. There's bits of... I suppose it would have been Big B. Um, sort of that Chemical Brothers Underworld sort of sound. Bits of that in here. Bits of fuzz guitar. It's a real, real, real melting pot. That's it. Melting pot of of stuff. Um, but I really, really enjoyed listening to this. This is great stuff. Cracking. There we go. Right, and the final one. And I was stoked to get this. Right, one of my favourite bands from 90s. Apart from all the sub pop stuff, is Caius, who were the probably the first real big stoner desert rock band, and they sp spawned numerous other bands like Queens um, and uh, Mondo Generator and uh, Unida and all kinds of bands. All the members, well, after they split, went their separate ways. And the, dr and the drummer from Caius was a guy called Brant Bjork. And um, this is his, I think it's 2005 release with his band Brant Bjork and the Bros. Which I think was basically, it's basically him, I think, with a few other people. And this is uh, Saved by Magic. Now I've only played the first, it's a double CD. Um, but this is just stoner, desert rock, par excellence. Um, the first CD is just absolutely magical. I was playing this driving back from Newton Abbott in the blazing sunshine along the 380. And this is driving music, par excellence, on a sunny day. Wouldn't listen to it on a murky day. But just roll the windows down and just cruise. Oh yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Um, for people who don't know Caius, or maybe they only know Kings of Stone Age, I would absolutely recommend anything by Caius. I would recommend anything I've heard. Everything I've heard by Brant Bjork is good. Anything by Nick Oliveri in Mondo Generator was good. Um, Caius kind of reformed with Bjork, Garcia, who's the original singer, and Nick Oliveri and a new drummer. Was it the new bass player? No, new guitarist. Because Josh Ome obviously had nothing to do with it. Uh, Vista Chino, they reformed as. And that's good. And basically anything any of these seem to do, just fantastic. I mean, Queens are fantastic as well. Queens of the Stone Age days. Um, there we go. Ramp York. Right, that's it. That's your lot. I think I've got some brilliant records there. Um, brilliant, some just some brilliant music. Edging up in 25 minutes. I don't know if wrong at the moment. I used to be able to get this down into about 10, 12 minutes, but seem to be seem to be just sprawling on and on, wittering on and on, but who cares? Um, I have a fun time doing it. Waffling on. Right, so there you go. 
So thanks for everybody who stuck it out to the end. Thank, especially to the end of the CDs. Um, thanks to all those people who turned off after the vinyl because they couldn't to hack the CDs. Thank you anyway. And um, cheers, VC. See you later. <laughs>